Warning, this video may contain content not suitable for everyone. Viewer discretion is advised. our bus got off the bus a little early how you creepers doing this morning afternoon evening whenever you're creeping with we are downtown at the moment and we are headed up to a place that has caught a lot of attention in the last year or two more so just in the last week and I'll tell you more when we get there but on June 2nd of 2018, Portland will never be the same, and same with the Portland Culinary Institute. There were some things that happened here that were not good, and they have made but all the media well, yeah, channels, especially yeah. some uh, really famous ones like Dateline NBC picked up, and just a ton of national news the nancy brophy how to murder your husband case we're going to go to where it happened i'm going to tell you guys more about the case it's a little different than what we normal co normally cover it, cover here on the channel but nonetheless very interesting and uh just kind of a warning before we start maybe not suitable for all audiences so if you are touchy um or you know, sensitive to this kind of subject matter. I do warn you, that's why I put the little discretion there at the beginning, but kind of a long-winded intro. We're heading there now, so stay tuned. It's gonna be definitely an interesting, very creepy story. It's a good one. You're, gonna, you're not gonna wanna miss this one. We are now here in the Goose Hollow neighborhood of Portland. And it's actually KGW right here, the news station, which has also done a great job of letting us, keeping us posted on this case. Like I said, June 2nd, 2018, so it's been a while. And it's been a long, very interesting trial. And all the news stations have been really keeping up on it. And uh, now it's actually gone national too, or I think, like I said, just recently Dateline NBC did a whole story, but that day would change the Institute, the Brophy family, and Portland, because it did shock a lot of folks around here as to what happened. And we are now on Southwest 16th and Jefferson, and we are gonna be approaching the Oregon Culinary Institute where this all went down that morning and uh, I'm gonna take you guys to the exact location that Dan Brophy was shot lost his life and from there from that day on caused a huge trial and they were married for many years they were 
husband and wife, obviously, the Brophy family. And like I said, things went south. And we're gonna show you the location, obviously, where this all went down. But I also want to show you guys and tell you guys a little bit more about this case. Now, not too long ago we were here because we were actually filming for the brand new Lincoln High School that's going up. And at the time, this was actually still the Oregon Culinary Institute has now changed to the Blue Star Donuts, which is a, you know, donut place here. But that morning surely rocked this whole area. Now, like I said, husband and wife for many years, Nancy Brof Brophy is actually the, actually a illustrator uh, I'm sorry, a publicist slash um, novelist here in Portland. And what I think really made this case, obviously a murder case being, you know, very sad and obviously something that is always tragic and, you know, kind of a, kind of an odd thing. Maybe not so much anymore because it's, it happens so often, but what made this case so different than most like I said her being a author she actually wrote a book saying how to kill your husband and like I said this is now you know the blue star donuts here but right inside these walls is where this all happened and like I said, she was a novelist and she wrote a book about how to, you know, kill your husband. And that's what made this really intriguing is the fact that, you know, not only was it a murder, but it seemed like her being an author was kind of pre-planned. And uh, like I said, I don't want to really hang around too close to the Blue, Blue Star because I want to, you know, give them their privacy. But right back there where we were, is where all this happened. And uh, we'll just kind of take a walk around the block and I'll tell you guys more. So that morning, um, investigators found out that after her actually arriving here to the Culinary Institute, that Nancy Brophy was actually the murderer. That's right. She um, said that when she arrived here at the Oregon Culinary Institute, that she was unaware that her husband, well, she was aware that her husband had been killed because of the fact that when the officers called her and told her, you know, to come here, um, she said in her testimony, which we will also talk about more, that she knew it wasn't good. She knew that whatever information they were giving her, the officers approached her and were giving her kind of like, you know, kind of a embracing feel as to know where, you know, we know that you're sad about what happened. Um, but yeah, she, uh, she acted like she really didn't know what was going on. And De Dan, her husband was dead. He had been shot multiple times, once in the chest and once I be, actually I believe twice in the in the chest or maybe in the abdominal re, region but they said um, that Nancy actually arrived here that morning in her minivan and was circling the area and that's kind of what kind of gave it away is the fact that she um, was already in the area and investigators later on found that the van had circled the blocks a couple times that morning and the reason how they were able to f figure that part out was through the TriMet, um, which is our you know bus, max, and train system here in Portland. They actually had her on one of their security cameras kind of circling the block here. And yeah, definitely, uh, 
not a good thing kind of tying her more to the scene stating that you know they didn't really when they very first told her and we're here to kind of you know make the uh scene safe and kind of secure the location for evidence they didn't really expect her to be a suspect until later on police uh actually driving her home in her own van later on after the detectives did their you know homework realizing that nancy brophy was actually in this area that morning and they had her on video um, a couple times in this vicinity in the minivan and as you can see like i said it is now a blue star where they kind of are utilizing these back cooking areas for their kitchen you know to kind of prepare the donuts and whatnot but right here on southwest 17th and jefferson that's where all this went down and just doing a little bit of the homework they said that dan brophy came to work that morning and was basically the only one here in the building and was preparing to do his thing he was a culinary instructor being a chef and he was very loved a lot of folks that went to this culinary institute knew of him if not personally just from him being here and it was really sad and it was really unfortunate that they came to go to school that morning and there was no instructor because Dan had been fatally shot and everybody was like who the heck could have done it now investigators also realized that that morning on video surveillance um, which could have been actually from over here I see some cameras right up here um, they noticed that like I said not only was the minivan kind of circling the area um, but they also and they also suspected that Nancy was the only one that kind of knew Dan's schedule so she was kind of the only one that would know about him being in this area but what makes that kind of interesting is that the prosecutors well the defense on her behalf stated that you know there's a ton of these little back alleys and all these little entrances around here um, there's a ton of construction and newer things cooking now but in 2018 this area was really desolate and really the only thing that was up and running was this you know culinary school being there are other businesses and mostly houses and residents around here so the pro or the her defense was you know it could have been somebody hanging out lurking in these bushes around one of these buildings in one of these alleyways that could have watched Dan go into the culinary institute and maybe that they were one of the people that actually you know killed killed Dan um, but they realized that that investigation had really no means because of the fact that a they saw Nancy in her van kind of circling the block B she would have been the only one that knew that Dan was at work C obviously or three the book that she wrote before kind of stating how to murder your husband or how to kill your husband and get away with it and another really really interesting tie-in to this whole thing was the murder weapon that actually police investigators recovered from Nancy Brophy's um, and Dan Brophy's house stating that the murder weapon that was actually used was found but there was something that happened to that that made it really quite interesting for investigators to kind of determine whether or not that was actually the you know the murder weapon and that is because Nancy Brophy purchased well investigators stated that she purchased a slide a different slide for a gun that she originally bought years before and uh, manipulated the different slide into the gun so that that way if investigators did find the gun later now I'm just going off what of what I've read you know this is none of information that's coming directly from this from me but from outside sources so if I get anything you know wrong or kind of flubbed up I hope you guys kind of do correct me because there is a lot to this story um, but yeah investigators finally figured out that the gun slide that she had ordered actually fit that gun that was the murder weapon and it was no longer there so investigators stated that she took the gun that she murdered Dan with and kind of manipulated the different slide that way if they did investigate the gun had never actually been you know triggered and another really interesting thing about this whole story was not only the book how to murder your husband but police investigators never actually recovered the bullets the um 
the spent casings to get the fingerprints off of. Now investigators also talked about the fact that they don't really do that. Uh, it's kind of a thing that's gone, you know, they, they rarely can get the actual fingerprints off of a spent shell, so they really don't, you know, really waste their time with that. And a lot of folks were like, oh man, I thought that they would, you know, kind of fingerprint things better or do their detect, you know, detective work. But in all honesty, I don't think when detectives got here that morning, they expected, you know, the suspect to be her husband. So really unfortunate all the way around, you know, not only for anybody that's involved in the case, the Oregon Culinary Institute, the Brophy families, all of Portland has really been watching this. And like I said, now being kind of national news as well. And uh, we were down here just maybe two, three months ago and none of this was here. So Blue Star just now moved in, kind of into the, the building. Actually the Oregon Culinary Institute stickers were still up on the windows and they kind of had it all taped off to where you couldn't really see what was going on on the inside but I did a little bit more homework and was able to find out that the you know room or the catering room that Dan was killed in was actually kitchen number one just uh in one of these like little back areas too so really like just a sad story very interesting to say the least um probably more so sad than anything just because obviously someone lost their life um but really to kind of wrap things up i think a lot of portlanders were just kind of intrigued into the case because of the fact that she you know pled not guilty and they had so much substantial evidence against her that in fact may 25th of this year she was indicted on second degree murder charges and as of today june i think we're on the 13th or 14th today is actually her, her um sentencing so she will be finally sentenced for the murder of dan brophy that happened right here um going on about four years ago so really unfortunate but i wanted to take you guys down here and show you kind of the exact location where all this went down um i was hoping that it would still have the oregon culinary institute stickers i kind of missed the pictures last time i was here i could have documented it and shown you guys you know where it was but i think they wanted to kind of get this building up in use and kind of give it some better days like i said really a sad story for anybody that knew dan and you know anybody that was part of the oregon culinary institute here when all that happened it really touched a lot of folks so yep this is where it happened really sad uh, but like i said very interesting too and we'll see we'll see how many you know what her sentence is going to be as of today i think it's uh, going to be at noon it's about nine o'clock right now so we will see yeah they got it decked out nice in here really utilizing this space so yeah this is where it all went down guys like i said now it's the donut shop all right so obviously i don't want to get in trouble but i just kind of asked and they said back here is actually where it happened and it says staff only, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna do anything. I'm not supposed to go back there, but I'm trying to get as close as I can, just to kind of show you guys um, the actual location too. Because you can see back into the kitchens, which this is the kitchens they would use to kind of, you know, teach folks the culinary. And now they're utilizing it for donuts, but I'm guessing it took, took place right back in there because I just talked to one of the workers and he said, yeah, it happened right there in kitchen one which is right past the the bathrooms so very sad but very very intriguing i know all of portland's following it we're going to see what the trial the verdict is guilty but we're going to see what the actual uh you know sentence is so yeah pretty crazy that all happened right here all right so here's the shot from this side and I was actually able to find some uh, pictures of that day. Pretty sad. And they had this all taped off, obviously. This was all roped off with the yellow tape. You would have been able to see the police kind of pulled up here in the front where all these bikers are now. And they would have had the, you know, the police line all the way around here. And uh, the entrance to the building where Dan would have showed up was on the other side. And so I believe, like I said, her van 
And correct me if I'm wrong, because like I said, there is just so much information about this case, but I believe her van, when she, you know, shot him, basically pulled off that way and turned around. And that was her main mistake is because right up here is where all the TriMet is. And they have a ton of the security cameras. So they basically caught her in her van, leaving the scene of the crime. I mean, you gotta be, I mean, you gotta be stupid enough to kill your husband, write a book about it, but then actually be on video leaving um, the, the premises. So she didn't have a very good case from the, be from the beginning. And with, like I said, when the investigators saw that different slide kind of put into the gun it was kind of a kind of a written book at that point i mean you write a book about how to murder your husband you buy a gun and then she also said that she bought the gun because she wanted to use it for you know investigative purposes about a novel she was writing so kind of just sounds wackadoodle and like i said i I've read a ton of historic murders in Portland and things of that nature where it's kind of like love crimes or true crimes about, you know, husbands and wives and things like that. But at least they're utilizing the building now for a good thing. But yeah, we're gonna, we'll see today what actually happens. And I think, like I said, the verdict goes in at about noon. So very, very sad for Dan Brophy and really Portland. It's always sad when someone gets murdered, but here it, here it is, now Blue Star Donuts. Pretty crazy. That's going to do it for today. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below. That will dial you in to more of these true crimes, all about Portland, really. Um, but yeah, that's it right there. And uh, if you guys already have it, make sure you hit that big thumbs up. You can ring that bell that way when we creep. You guys will be the first to creep. Rest in peace to Dan and just a all around really sad sad day that day for portland but that's gonna do it creeper out for now peace all right this just in i was actually listening to the verdict nancy brophy sentenced to life in prison for the murder of her husband june of 2018 where we just were so yeah Life in prison.